Coming up on Harvest, Christian singer and songwriter Laura Kazer opens up about God's power to heal the brokenhearted, and she's going to perform some new music from her newest project live in Studio B. Also, what do you do when life is dull and you need a little bit of a pick-me-up? Pastor Mark Lance answers that question in What to Do During the Dormant Season, and Brian Bush joins us from Israel with today's Moments in the Holy Land. We don't want you to go anywhere because The Harvest Show starts right now. Welcome to The Harvest Show. And as you can see, we've got a few friends in the studio today, live audience joining us, mm -hmm. just happen to be passing through town. So they figure, hey, let's go see what's happening on the set of The Harvest Show. So thanks, guys, for being here. And uh, good to be back after a little bit of a, uh, a time away. Great to see you all. Could you please tell me who you are? Yeah. We're not, Who's we're a not new guy? Sure. It's been and around. Where yeah. have you been? <laughs> it's been a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a new guy? Uh, I've had a great couple weeks in Croatia with family, mm -hmm. catching up with uh, cousins, aunts, and uncles from mm -hmm. my father's side as well as my mother's side. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed the Adriatic Sea. It was just steaming oh. hot over there. We were hitting close to 40 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. 100 degrees. Oh almost every day, so my wife was really enjoying it, and I was <laughs> in the shade reading or sleeping or eating or cooking or something like that, but a really, really good time to get away. So this time when you were feeding the hungry, it was you. It was us. Yes. It was yeah. our family, yeah. Had a great opportunity to see some old uh, ruins from uh, churches that were built mm -hmm. in uh, 400 A.D. era, wow. right after... Right after the birth of, of you know major Christianity with with mm -hmm. Constantinople, and also some uh, chapel sanctuaries from the 1100s as well, and pilgrims would go and and uh, spend some time in prayer there. So that was a nice part of the trip as well, just so to see have, the, the roots. We have video and pictures of all this. Yeah, and, and you... <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> My daughter's going to post them up once we get them off the hard drive. Uh, well, Stefan, I wanted to know, what was the spiritual climate like there? Uh, interesting. Uh, we did go to a Catholic church every mm -hmm. Sunday on the island mm -hmm. and uh, very... Uh, a spirited. I was surprised mm -hmm. to see, you know, bongo drums and acoustic <laughs> guitars. And this sounds like a Pentecostal music. church that it, I was in. It was a little different, yeah, yeah. But uh, good messages uh, from uh, from uh, from the from the pastor there. Uh, I didn't understand them. They had to be, you know, interpreted for me. Uh -huh. but, but everyone said, yeah, he was speaking a good word. I said, okay, good. <laughs> Let's go get those palachinkas and have some lunch. <laughs> Time to go. But it was good to be away. Uh -huh. uh, didn't catch up too much with the news, but notice just this uh, explosion. I know you've got an article today from Planned Parenthood and uh, yeah. the uh, kind of the undercover uh, revelation of, of some of the, really the darker side of that organization. Well, and it continues to be buried by much of the national media, so it took me as surprising that the Washington Post mm -hmm. actually had a story uh, talking about, now it was an opinion piece by Kathleen Parker, but she's talking about how even Hillary Clinton, staunchly pro-choice, is having to come out now and talk about uh, that she used the word disturbing to talk about the videos coming out from mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood. And a uh, fourth video has come out where they show uh, Planned Parenthood people basically taking a part uh, a baby boy and uh, harvesting the organs of that. And then the author of the article, Kathleen Parker, goes on to write about in the defunding argument that goes on against Planned Parenthood, the, the supporters of Planned Parenthood talk about how while well, women's health is being jeopardized. And she says Planned Parenthood doesn't even do mammograms. The, the mm -hmm. exam that they do for women is something that women can do on their own. And the fact that is in most states where Planned Parenthood is, uh, there are tons of community centers, community health clinics that could do the job. For instance, uh, she brings up Maine because one of the uh, people wrote, Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine is trying to put together an alternative to the funding bill. Well, in Maine, there are 135 community health centers and only four Planned Parenthoods. So mm -hmm. how much jeopardy are you really putting women's health in if you defund Planned Parenthood? And for those of us who don't want to provide tax dollars for abortions, mm -hmm. it would take that away. 
You know, it's going to be interesting this week when we hear the Republican candidates vying for the GOP spot, how they stand, uh, where they stand on this position. I know that one of the candidates has said, yes, to defund uh, Planned Parenthood, but it's the, it's the same old narrative. We've heard it mm -hmm. year after year, it's jeopardizing women's rights to affordable, I mean, care when that's just not, the, that's simply not the case. You and I have both worked for crisis pregnancy centers and right. volunteered there, and we know the truth, and that is you can go to a clinic and get a mammogram. You know, you can go and get those things. So it's part of the narrative, and I'm interested in seeing what these candidates will say in terms of it. And, you know, hopefully they will, because you're right. We don't hear about this in the mainstream. Now, this is uh, obviously still at the very early stages, but yes. has there been any talk of any uh, criminal action or the Department mm -hmm. of Justice, anyone getting involved with respect to some of the allegations? None of that. As a matter of fact, the White House has been very staunch in their support of Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. continuing. Uh, and uh, a lot of the media reports have tried to cast doubt on the people doing the undercover investigation, try mm -hmm. and call it a f hoax or a fraud. Uh, it just hasn't gained much traction. The, the California Attorney General has called for action against the group that did the videos. Oh, wow. And um, <laughs> a judge in California has called for uh, all of the videos, any future videos actually not being able to be shown. Wow. Uh, an injunction against them. So, uh, unfortunately, against Planned Parenthood, you yeah. know, a very liberal judicial system right. has come out against the groups who has revealed the truth of what's going on. Wow. Uh, also saw a, a headline, you had forwarded the article over the weekend about the rise in a particular part of China where there's a movement to wear crosses because the government has been taking down churches and especially taking down crosses from the public visibility. But this other article mentions that Christianity in the Middle East, and I thought the headline was quite telling, uh, facing the worst religious persecution since the earliest of history. And we're seeing this movement uh, globalized of, of uh, really a stand against Christianity. And just want to make mention that uh, this summer we've had a very strong campaign, a global summer harvest campaign for the month of June and July. And uh, we've actually got some good news to share that uh, the, the goals have been met. That's right. The article primarily dealt with uh, Iraq and Iran and uh, Syria. And indeed, you know, in those countries, the uh, attack against Christianity has been very intense and uh, it's been very brutal. Uh, in other parts of, of, of the Middle East, for instance, in Egypt, uh, uh, President Sisi has said he's going to stand with the Coptic Christians, he's going to protect their assets, etc. Uh, Jordan claims that they have complete freedom of religion, so does U U uh, United, United Arab Emirates and Dubai, they claim that they have complete freedom of religion. Israel, of course, is right. absolutely freedom of religion. Yeah. But, uh, and, you know, there are challenges. There's some huge challenges against Christianity. And China uh, is kind of under the radar in a lot of ways in that people think that it's free and more open, etc. But we have personal knowledge, for instance, of uh, uh, missionaries mm -hmm. who are not necessarily now being able to call missionaries. They're called teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have severe restrictions on what they can do as far as preaching the gospel. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's very troubling. Uh, China is really trying to clamp down on Christianity for some reason, and it's really an unknown reason. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can't be threatened at this point right. like they were back in the old days of Mao Zedong and right. all that. I mean, it, it's not the same situation, yeah. but uh, there is a real crackdown on Christianity in China. And uh, that's where, frankly, our shortwave radio uh, getting into China is very important, as mm -hmm. well as Middle East television throughout the entire Middle East. And that's why we're so happy that the Global Summer Harvest did as well as it did. Can you give us a final it did. report? I don't, I don't have the exact number, but we exceeded uh, the requested goal of our partners. And we're so thankful for that. And uh, summer's a tough time for a lot of people to give. We got a lot of uh, needs as we go forward, but uh, we did end up having a very, very good June and July, we met the goal, and we're very thankful for all of our partners. But continue to pray for all the ministry that we have going forward. It's a big challenge. Yeah, because much of this ministry goes into parts of the world that, uh, you know, you just the liberties aren't there, and so we need to get the message of the gospel out. We need to support the church that's residing and growing and, and hopefully thriving in those nations. And uh, obviously, we can't do it without your support. So thank you for helping us to achieve that goal for the summer Harvest, a summer global harvest campaign. We'd love to connect with you today as well. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter. You can email us live on the set here, live at lacy.com. Get your email right to our front door. The international news is next here on The Harvest Show.
Now on this Monday, August 3rd, 2015, here's what's happening in your world. Blazes raging in forests across California have killed a firefighter and forced hundreds of people to flee their homes as crews continue to battle the flames from the air and on the ground. Fire officials battling the Willow Fire in Madera County say weather conditions have improved, enabling them to battle the blazes for a period of time. 23 large fires, many of them sparked by lightning strikes, are burning all across Northern California. We're on the point of turning the corner and getting ahead of this fire. So uh, with all the resources here, you know, we're going to try to do as much as we can, as fast as we can, as safe as we can. So then we can start releasing some of those resources to other fires. Some 8,000 firefighters are working to subdue those blazes. Their task made incredibly difficult by several years of drought that have dried out California. The governor, Jerry Brown, has declared a state of emergency and activated the California National Guard to help with disaster recovery. Israel's Prime Minister vowed Sunday to fight the recent violence that has inflamed the region over the past few days. Benjamin Netanyahu spoke at his weekly cabinet meeting after a week marred by the death of a Palestinian infant in the West Bank and the stabbing of six people at the gay pride parade in Jerusalem. Suspected Jewish assailants set fire to a West Bank home Friday and burned a sleeping Palestinian toddler. His four-year-old brother, father, and mother have been seriously wounded. Thursday, an anti-gay, ultra-Orthodox extremist is suspected to have stabbed six revelers at Jerusalem's gay pride parade. And on Saturday, an 18-year-old Palestinian protester died of his wounds after being shot by Israeli troops during a demonstration over the killing of the toddler. Secretary of State John Kerry said in Cairo Sunday progress is being made in the fight against the Islamic State militant group. Kerry is in Cairo as part of a Middle East trip aimed at assuaging concerns over the nuclear deal between Iran and the world powers. He also said it's important for the United States and Egypt to rebuild many aspects of their relationship. The importance of Egypt and the importance of the relationship uh, can't be understated. Uh, Egypt has long played a pivotal role uh, in the region and in world affairs. And we have great confidence, I assure you, that that's part of the foundation on which we will build the future. U.S. military assistance to Egypt had been on hold until earlier this year due to human rights and democracy concerns in the wake of the military overthrow of Islamist President Mohamed Morsi in 2013. Greece's main stock index plunged over 22 percent as it reopened today after a five-week closure, giving investors their first opportunity since June to react to the country's latest economic crisis. Bank stocks suffered the most. They neared the daily trading limit of 30% loss. The Athens Stock Exchange and Greek banks were closed June 29th when controls on money withdrawals and transfers were imposed to prevent a collapse in the banking system. Banks have since reopened while maintaining strict withdrawal limits. Greece is currently in intense negotiations with bailout lenders in an effort to negotiate the terms of a massive new rescue package in the next two weeks. And in Russia, an MI-28 attack helicopter crashed at the Aviadarts Air Show in Riaz on Sunday, killing one pilot and injuring another. First pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Igor Batenko, was killed when the helicopter went down. And the defense ministry says the surviving pilot is in satisfactory condition. Flights on those helicopters have been suspended. An investigation has been launched by the Russian Air Force. There were no injuries to spectators at the air show. The surviving pilot has said a hydraulic failure was the cause of the crash. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance begins his new teaching series, What to Do During the Dormant Season. But up next, Laura Kazor performs new music from her project, Restore Me. The Harvest Show continues after this. With the potential to connect billions of people so the world can see Jesus, LaCie Broadcasting must receive $100,000 to keep our shortwave radio transmitters up and running with a strong, clear signal. Please help with your gift today. Our shortwave broadcasts reach into hundreds of countries on every major continent. The potential impact of your gift is enormous. Any amount you give will help cover the world. Please call LaCie Broadcasting now, 1-800-365-3732.
I know nothing that I can do could change who I am to you at my worst and at my best you couldn't love me more or less Lord you are the maker of everything lovely creator of the universe let your love surround me when this world has me broken feeling like I can't win I run to you you're all I need only you restore me the strength I need for every step and every breath I breathe and in this truth I find my rest you couldn't love me more or less Lord you are the maker of everything lovely creator of the universe let your love surround me when this world has me broken feeling like i can't win i run to you you're all i need only you restore me Everything lovely, creator of the universe, let your love surround me when this world has me broken, feeling like Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or old jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping, or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra things you want to do but just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and have decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. With Mineral Concentrate from Making Healthy Choices, this fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. What does that mean? Well, most people say they've never felt better. The best part is it's only $29.95. And if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. This electrolyte formula promotes dependable, solid energy day in and day out. So call the number on the screen. Do it for your spouse, your kids, your friends, and most of all, do it for you. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. It's time for life.
Singer and songwriter Laura Kazor knows all too well that there's power in the name of Jesus. Laura's son was born with a heart problem that prompted her to trust God and lean on his promises. She joins us today with her story and with new music titled Restore Me. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Thanks Laura. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so there was a time when you weren't always thinking about being a Christian singer. When did the transformation take place that you decided yeah. you wanted to, you know, be a Christian artist? Yeah, I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, I was probably a senior in college, and I was really involved with our chapter of Campus Crusade for Christ, and I led worship there and helped with the music, and I was also really involved in an a cappella group when I was in school, and that was when I started writing and doing some recording, and mm -hmm. that was really a transformative year for me. And so, so pretty much it was a natural progression yeah, for you then. Yeah, absolutely. To do it. Yeah, I did always. I always sang. I mean, I sang since I was a small child, and I started writing when I was young too. But it was really then that I, when I was making choices about what I wanted to do with my life and my career, that it became clear that that's the direction I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, music just seems to be so universal and and yeah. so impactful. Why do you think? Uh, there's such an influence through the words that we sing or the words that we hear uh, in song versus, you know, things that we read or uh, things that we yeah, just say. That's a really good observation. I think, well, music, I, I feel like it's totally God's language in some ways, mm -hmm. you know, and he created music and our and our ability to be creative is totally a gift from him. And mm -hmm. But there, you're right, there's something that's so disarming about music. You can share a message through lyrics that you may not be able to have in just a conversation, you mm -hmm. know, and it's a great way to share Christ. And uh, I've, you know, just giving my CDs and having people listen to, to my songs has really opened up a lot of doors that probably wouldn't have happened otherwise. You know, a lot of people have songwriters. They write those songs for them, but yeah. your songs have come from your own personal experiences. Yes. Tell us about your little one named Samuel. Yeah, Samuel was born last year in, in May, May 22nd, and mm -hmm. he was born with a, a large hole in his heart, a VSD. Um, we found out about it two days after he was born. And it was a very challenging year, I mean, in so many ways. And he had to have op open heart surgery when he was six months old, so mm -hmm. in November. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the grace of God, it all went so well. It couldn't have gone better. And he's, you know, healed and fully repaired. But really, really had to trust God through the most difficult times. Mm -hmm. So, sure. uh, uh, go on. I was going to say, what, what kind of helped you get through mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that time? Because, you know, uh, at some point in time, and today people just watching today, you know, some may be going through some uh, seriously risky and, yeah. and threatening situations. Absolutely. The, the only thing that got me through was prayer and spending time in the Word and letting God speak to my heart. Because in those moments when I was so overwhelmed with anxiety and fear, when I asked God to speak to me, He did, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. gave me direct words about, about, about my son that I could trust I could trust him with my son, you know, and just getting those words of comfort was what got me through. And that, just hearing from God on a daily basis was what, you know, helped me survive, mm. for sure. So the title of your new CD is Restore Me. Yes. So I can imagine where that title came from. Yeah. <laughs> Give yeah. me the backstory on it. Well, actually, the funny thing is, and this is how cool God is, I actually wrote a lot of these songs before I was even pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how really the Lord used my own music to minister to me when I was listening to them, when I was getting the final mixes and just putting the final touches on the album, was that was really when we were going through the thick of all of everything with Samuel. And I, you know, so these songs just encouraged me and ministered to me in, in such a deep and profound way. But Restore Me, um, so I actually wrote that several years before he was born, even. It was one of my older songs. And it, being in the, it's actually more specific to being in the music industry or in any industry where you face a lot of criticism or mm -hmm. people have opinions about what you should be or what you need to do to be successful. And I wrote it with a good friend of mine, Amy, and we just were feeling really beat up, you know, just kind of beat up by the industry and beat up by kind of the world in general. And we were encouraging each other and we, and just in conversation, it came out, you know, the only place that we can go for restoration and healing is in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And he's the only one that can restore us. It's not, you know, getting a good review, you know, or getting positive praise from, from anyone. It's really just going to the presence of God for his healing and restoration. And that's where that song came from. Hmm. How does it feel when you hear the audience or you hear people singing your music or an audience singing back to you? How does that feel? It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an incredible feeling. And really just for the sake, I mean, 
just to think that, yes, yeah, something that we created or something that I created and wrote is speaking to someone in such a way that they're learning, learning the lyrics and it's, it's affecting their lives and ministering to them. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. Uh, tell us about Life Thirst, yeah. kind of another ministry that, that you're involved in. Yeah. What's the, the origin of that and, and really the, the purpose, the mission? The mission behind Life Thirst, it's an evangelical event um, that just incorporates music, worship, and speakers, keynote speakers that we bring in from all over the country for various themes. And uh, we partner with churches um, that are willing to host the event. And I come in and help lead worship with my band. And um, we coordinate the speakers. And it's, it's meant to be a, a night of, of edification and building up for the body, but also a place, a really safe place to bring a non-believer where they can hear the word. And, mm -hmm. um, and be challenged and hopefully come to any, in any particular themes or topics that you're focusing on this year yeah this this year we're actually partnering with the Institute for Creation Research mm -hmm. um, and it is uh, it's specifically about equipping believers with um, with the knowledge you know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by a creator and giving us kind of ammunition to sort mm -hmm. of combat against some kind of the common theories of evolution. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're partnering with them and really excited about, about that event. What brings you, what gives you the greatest joy in ministry? Oh, that's a, such a good question. Really, mm -hmm. inter yeah, really interacting with people mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis and getting to know people, becoming a part of their lives, and then being able to encourage them over time, I mean, I mean, so many people that I've encountered over the years that stay in close connection with, you know, whether it's through email or even just through Facebook messaging and just being able to be with them and to encourage them throughout their life. And that's been the most incredible part of being in ministry, for sure. So when the worship is over and the church service is yeah. done, what do people say to you about, you know, your new project, Restore Me? What impact is it having on them? Yeah, I've, I've been getting a lot of really good feedback, and there's a couple really powerful songs on the album, particularly the one that I'm going to actually sing next, um, We Don't Always Understand, has been really ministering to a lot of people, talking mm -hmm. about how life is just hard sometimes. You know, we go through things that we can't ever begin to understand, but it doesn't change the fact that God is good. He's good, and He is with us, and that song in particular has really been kind of reverberating with a lot of people and, and encouraging them. Wow, thank you so much, Laura, for sharing your gift with us. To connect with Laura, go to, go to lauracazar.org or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project, Restore Me, Still to Come. Laura Kazor performs another song from her new CD, but up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's teaching. We'll be right back. Friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles around the world through our Spread the Word ministry. We're so thankful for your support to help us take the best news of all time to more of those hungry to hear it. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. Well, Sea Tours comes to Israel three times a year, February, June, and November. And we want you to join us as we experience the land of the Bible and walk through the Bible where the Bible literally does come to life. We want to share with you more information at LaSeeTours.com about how you can come to the land of the Bible and experience the Bible for yourself. For a free November tour brochure, call 1-800-685-3732 or visit LaSeeTours.com. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. 
To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lassie.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. I feel compelled this week to talk to people who feel as though they're going through a spiritually dormant time in their lives, a time in which you feel as though maybe nothing's happening, almost as if God has put you on the shelf, and you don't feel as though you're growing, you're progressing, you're achieving anything significant in this time of your life. You're in a season in which God seems silent. You've not heard anything from God. There's been no fresh revelation. There's no direction for your life and the dreams and the hopes that you have for the future. They just seem lifeless right now. You just really don't know where you are. And I know that's a very difficult time for anyone to walk through. I've been there in my life. I've walked through those dormant, empty times. Now, I live in northern Indiana. I know it's summer right now, but I know how difficult the winter season can become. It's a time when trees... They become bare, the colorful plants and flowers die off because of the enormous amount of, of, amount of snow that we get in this region. Everything seems to slow down. But winter is also a time of preparation. Roots and tree saps respond to soil and temperature changes to prepare for growth that comes in the spring. And I believe the same is true in the realm of the spirit. It's in those seemingly dormant seasons when God seems silent and nothing seems to be moving that God is actually preparing you for something greater to happen in the next season of your life. It's in those times when nothing seems to be happening that really there is so much happening deep within us. God is doing that deep work within your heart, preparing you for the next phase of your life. And without that inner work through the seemingly dormant season, you're never going to be ready to handle what God is about to bring to you. And I feel very strongly about what I'm speaking this morning. I know there's people watching right now full of questions about why God doesn't seem to be moving, why nothing seems to be happening. And I feel as though the Lord has sent me to tell you that there's more happening than what you realize. You are just in a season of preparation for what's next. And I can tell you through the unction of the Spirit that what is next is bigger than what you've ever imagined. There is a deep work of character that God is going uh, through right now with you that you may not be completely aware of. And I want to share this scripture with you. Remember, Philippians 1, 6 tells us that we are confident of this very thing. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Friend, God is doing this deep work of developing character deep within you that you will need to walk into the next phase of your life. Because it's not about the gifts, it's not about the abilities that you have. Gifts and talent without character will cause you to plummet when you rise to the top. But I've seen many gifted people who've tried to move forward, but they've done it without pursuing Christ-like character, and they never make it. My exhortation to you today is this, through this dormant season, let God do a deep work of developing your character. Talent may take you to the top, but it's godly character that will keep you there. So what do you do through this dormant, character-building time of your life? Well, the first thing is this. Be clear on your motives. Let God purify your motives. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, we are to examine ourselves whether we are in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not that your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you. I remember when I went through a season of my life in which I was not involved in full-time ministry. It was a difficult season, but it was a time in which God prompted me to probe deeply into why I was doing what I was doing. What was my motivation for being in ministry? 
And friend, if you're in that dormant season right now, I encourage you, take some time to be introspective. Look deep within yourself. Ask yourself the hard questions of why you do what you do. And if you can come out of this dormant season with a clear motive for why you do what you do, you will move into the next season of your life with more power, with more motivation and strength than you have ever had. This is a time of growth for you. Let God purify your motives. I believe he will empower you into the next season of your life. Even when God is not moving and not speaking, he is still teaching. Let him build that character, purify your motives, and you will be ready for what God brings next. Always some solid teaching from Pastor Mark Lance, very practical, very down to earth. And as Pastor Mark said, you know, prayer is a, is a big key of that in that preparation. You can connect with us at Prayer Line at 1 800 365 3732, or you can email prayer at lacy.com. I'm in Prayer Line with Pastor Charles, our director right now, and uh, just wonderful volunteers that connect with our, our partners and uh, just folks that happen to view the program and call in, whether it's uh, to hear a word of the Lord, whether it's to, to go to the Lord in prayer, or whether it's to share some good news about what God's done in your life. We'd love to hear from you today. And Pastor Charles, I know that today we've got some prayer requests to mention that come from our, uh, our partners in faith. Right, right, Steph, and those ones who come alongside of us each month and make a donation to the uh, cause. And, and I tell you what, it's just like Pete had mentioned earlier, you know, they help us uh, meet our, our destiny here. And mm -hmm. uh, we came to the place where we, we are sufficient for now. And we're just looking for everyone to continue doing what they do. We have Allison, uh, who Alice is a uh, partner in faith. Alice says that my husband's been having problems with a supervisor at work outside of his department mm. says agree with me in prayer that he'd be able to walk in love with this supervisor yeah, yeah right yeah. and then we have Karen who's also a partner says please agree with me in prayer that I passed the Florida bar exam in February of next year Amen. Yeah, we're in complete agreement with her Christian uh, going into law Tim and Laura says our youngest son is in the military and I'm asking you all to pray with us mm. that he and his comrades keep safe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Dave. Uh, uh, Dave says that, please pray for my wife, Carla, uh, who is losing blood. And the doctors can't find where yet. So wow. there's some wow. things going on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know we've got uh, members uh, of our staff here. We've got uh, sons right. in the military as well. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's close to our hearts. But let's take a moment and, and pray for these folks. And sure. it seems like, you know, no matter what it is in life, whether it's a physical issue, a relationship issue, a work issue, a financial right. issue, mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is that we do bring that to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. That's what prayer is all about, talking mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord God, for those ones who are indeed calling us at prayer line, agreeing with us in prayer, Lord God, that you might give them a testimony. And Father God, we thank you for it. We thank you for those ones that you're bringing in out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you, Lord God, for the bodies that you're touching and healing, Lord, from the inside out. Father, we know, Lord God, those ones that protecting this country, you have protection around them, and we'll continue to ask you, Lord, to bless them and give favor to them in Jesus' mighty yes, name. Lord. Amen. 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 Love to hear from you today. Prayer line, really, any time of the day or night, 24-7, 365. You can connect with us here. That's why this ministry is here to serve you and to see God move powerfully in your life. 1-800-365-37. Three, two, right there on the screen as you see. Also, prayer at lacy.com. Great way to connect. We want to say thank you to Laura Kazor, who's in our studios today. Just tremendous story and tremendous heart of ministry. Here she is with another release from her album, Restore Me. We don't always understand. Little hands, little feet No explanation Just wasn't meant to be They hold on to the promise That everything, even this Has a purpose somehow Keep on believing He is good and Even if all you're saying is take this from my head, I know you have a plan. We don't always understand. 
and welcome to Moments from the Holy Land. The Bible admonishes us to be Christ-like, and this week we're going to talk about three attributes of God that we can all share in. First off today, we can be encouragers. We can affirm the work God is doing in others. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 reads, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Now, here's the truth. We all struggle with who we are and who we want to be. We may wonder how our lives have come to be the way that they are and what we have might have, what we might have been if we had made different choices along the way. Some of us may question whether or not we are living out the life God intends for us and whether We are making an impact through our lives for his kingdom. You know, I stand here in Jerusalem, of all places, and usually bring you the news alongside some inspirational segments. I try both to inform and inspire you from a Christian perspective. And on occasions, I've received compliments from you all, encouraging me to continue this good work. What a source of joy that is. What a confirmation to what I'm doing, because folks like you kindly take a moment to write in and say that you were blessed. Because of your encouragement, I feel affirmation. It's a blessing we have, 
that we as Christians build each other up and encourage one another. Affirming God's work in others is a powerful way to bring a blessing. When we come alongside others and say things like, I just want to tell you that I see how God is using your life. Or something like, I know this season is rough in your life, but you're going to get through it. Not only do we impact others, we also remind ourselves of the power and the grace of Christ to make a difference in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And you know what? Our faith grows stronger because of that. Here's something to think about. Our faith is a response to God's work in our lives. Now, what we have to do, what what do we have to watch out for? There's two Ps, (laughs) pride and pain. Pride, because sometimes people have the tendency to think that they are better than others. And pain, both in our lives, when we realize how far we are from God, and in other people's lives, when we cause others hurt because of an insensitive word or an abrupt action. The goal here is that our faith ought to be a tremendous source of comfort, confidence, and assurance as we look to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. When we understand God's perspective, that faith is His work, we have freedom to be the man or woman God has intended us to be. Whatever your life situation is today, friend, be encouraged and be an encourager to others because we can affirm the work God is doing in others through encouragement. Now, next time, we're going to talk about what for most of us is the most difficult or are the most difficult of people for us to show God's attributes to. Join me then. Thanks, friends, for being with me from here in Jerusalem and for watching The Harvest Show. Bye-bye. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, LaCie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this La Cie Broadcasting Channel. You know, it occurs to me that biblical words like vows and commitments and pledges have somehow lost their meaning in today's culture. But we expect God to keep His promises to us, so why shouldn't He expect us to keep ours? Keeping a promise isn't always easy. Sometimes it requires us to take bold steps of faith. Dr. Lester Sumrall said, when you walk in the faith realm, you must accept the Word of God or you won't make it. For example, God said, If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. And again, he said, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it. It is better you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. God will always honor his promises to you. Remember to always honor your promises to him. I'm Pete Summerall with Lissy Tours. Behind me, the incredible city of Jerusalem and Mount Zion where Christ had the Last Supper with the disciples. 
Let's see Tours comes to Israel three times a year, and we want you to come along. We've got some great information for you on LaCTours.com about how you can come to the land of the Bible and experience the Bible for yourself. We come in February, June, and November. They're great tours, and we've got more information for you at LaCTours.com. There you see the fabulous Harvest Show Facebook page. You know, if you like that page, then you get access to all kinds of interesting features, including Brian Bush talking to a fan of the Harvest Show over in the Middle East. Believe it or not, it's true. They watch us over there on METV, just like you're watching us now. So like us. We really want you to like us. All you have to do is search the Harvest Show on Facebook. You'll also get updates on guests. Uh, interesting teachings from Mark Lance, all kinds of fun things that just augment what we do here over our hour uh, right here on the Lucy Broadcasting Network. Links to news stories, recipes, and all other kinds of good stuff. Choose your news when we have that. Oh, we yeah. haven't had that for a while. What's up with that? Well, we've had the Global Summer Harvest oh, that's running right. on Friday. That's and, right. Uh, the World Pulse Festival Show. Mm -hmm. The World Pulse Festival Show. We've had things to preempt, I, I know it's hard to believe that something <laughs> could preempt America's fastest growing Christian talk sensation and yet it has happened. Nevertheless, we want to remind you that we had a very successful Global mm -hmm. Summer Harvest and we appreciate your support through the months of June and July. And that would be great if we were just shutting off the transmitter for August, but it doesn't work that way and so we have to continue to, to ask for support, especially for shortwave radio. It is so important. It's a technology that here in the United States doesn't mean all that much to us because, quite frankly, there isn't shortwave radio here in the United States. But oh, around the world, I mean, you've been in places where the handy-dandy shortwave radio is really the yeah. only means it's, of communication. Yeah, it's the, it's the way that uh, you can connect with the outside world. And uh, what shortwave is, it's, it's kind of like an amplified AM signal mm -hmm. and just carries very far, very clear. Uh, it's used uh, in a uh, large measure by governments who kind of like Radio Free Europe or Radio Free America or, or uh, 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 boy, what's the other one? Voice of America is another yep. one, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, BBC, BBC out, is of, big out of the shortwave. UK. Uh, but... They use it because they know it's effective. And uh, Pete will have the numbers. We can ask him tomorrow. But somewhere right around uh, 500 million people listening to shortwave any given time around the world. And I've seen it in effect and in work in, in Africa in large part, traveling throughout Africa. Uh, you know, people will have their shortwave radio out. And they'll be s and in their home or in their business, in their shop or on the street. And what they're listening to is shortwave radio. I've seen them in uh, in vehicles, in cars. On you know, like we've got mm -hmm. AM, FM, and CD right. on our little car dial. Shortwave is right there as well, and uh, it is a means by which we can really reach the untold billions yet untold. Uh, and one of the great things about shortwave radio is that it can cross geographical borders into mm -hmm. places like Cuba, Venezuela. China, North Korea, Myanmar, uh, Saudi Arabia, places where uh, there's just real uh, offense and closure to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that signal carries in there loud and clear. And Valerie, I have to think when Pete was talking about the growth of the church mm -hmm. in China and how much it's playing a role there. I have to think shortwave radio played a large part in that growth. That's right, Chuck. When you consider that there are one billion shortwave receivers in the world, we are definitely making an impact in China. You know, when I think of people who managed to get us an email saying, I heard you, uh, the gospel, and they're right there in North Korea. I mean, right. We can't go there. You you know, you've traveled the world, Stephen, with Feed the Hungry, but you, there are places you simply cannot go that shortwave radio can go. I remember, you know, when I lived in Florida and all of those hurricanes were coming through, mm -hmm. you know, the cell tower, uh, it was interrupted. We couldn't sure. get any phone calls out. But my dad had his trusty little shortwave radio, and we were able to stay abreast of what was happening with the storm. So people are definitely receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ through shortwave. And you've done an amazing job helping us meet our goal of the global summer harvest. Now we need your help to 
you know, to continue sharing the gospel with people around the world through shortwave radio. Don't think of it as an old school technology because this old school technology is reaching the masses. The nice thing is for those of you here in the United States, you can listen online to the various shortwave radio programs we have through our World Harvest Radio website. And so you could take your pick of any of the six angels that might be broadcasting right now around the world or listen to Poi Boy and the Cheese on Palau FM. <laughs> but whatever the case, you could listen to the various programs that are out there and, and get a feel for what it's like for these people in foreign countries and think of what it must be like for them to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in lands where perhaps hope is uh, not something that you come across every day. Hope is at a premium and sometimes it's that way for all of us here in the United States. But hopefully we've given you a little bit of hope, a little bit of joy on this Monday and we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow on the next edition of Harvest. With the potential to connect billions of people around the world, the C Broadcasting must receive $100,000 to keep our shortwave radio transmitters up and running with a strong, clear signal. Please help with your gift today. Our shortwave broadcasts reach into hundreds of countries on every major continent. And with more than a billion shortwave receivers in the world, the potential impact of your gift is enormous. Any amount you give will help cover the world so the world can see Jesus. Please give online now at lacy.com. To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's l-e-s-e-a.com. Critical news is happening in the Middle East 24-7, and I am living in the middle of it all, right here in Jerusalem. Correspondent Brian Bush brings you a front row seat to major events unfolding in the Middle East. Brian knows the people and the land, keeping you abreast of the news with expert analysis from a Christian perspective. Watch my Israel Up to the Minute reports on The Harvest Show right here, only on this Lissy Broadcasting Station. The Harvest Show is produced by La Cee Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.